This is Andy Perua for Boxing News. I'm joined by trainer Jamie Moore here in Manchester. Jamie, in your hometown, must be nice, a nice local one for you today. But how are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thank you. Yeah, you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Obviously, we're here for a rematch yourself, Jack. The team have wanted for a long time. The Josh Taylor one, of course. How relieved, excited are you for Jack that he has this chance now to... I can't really say right wrongs because a lot of people felt that he did enough in the first fight to have his hand raised, but a chance to set the record straight, so we say, shall we say, and put to bed this rivalry in Jack's behalf. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm just glad for Jack that, um, well, first of all, he's got a big fight because his talent deserves that. You know, I've been a big believer in Jack for ever since he came to my gym. I always believed he could be performing and winning at, at this level. And um, yeah, it has been a long time coming, but, and, and you know, a lot of people point, point the finger sometimes these things just happen but I, I've just I feel that the longer it's gone on the more it's matured there's a bit more of a story behind it it's created a little bit more needle and um, and it's made it's sort of added to the story rather than taking away from it and every so sometimes when there's time and space in between a, a fight the rematch doesn't seem as taste it as time goes on it seems like it's sort of increased as time goes on with this one which is always the sign that it's, a, it's genuine and it's a good fight. Jamie, we saw a very fiery press conference yesterday and um, a very interesting face-off where they both kind of got a little handsy. What did you make of what we saw on the stage in Scotland? Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect it to get that. I, 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 honestly, I thought they wouldn't allow them to go that close to each other. So, uh, so that was a little bit of a surprise. But, you know, it, it wasn't a surprise the way it sort of escalated and, and transcended, but... It is what it is. We live to fight another day. Live to fight another day. One thing I'm interested to get your thoughts on is they both said that it's not hate. It seems to be that there's just a very, very strong dislike in. I agree. I agree. No, they build it as, you know, hate runs deep. And, and hate's a strong word. And it did get mentioned yesterday in the press conference. They dislike each other a lot. Um, but, but you know, hate, to so say you hate someone, you know, <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have had to have done something disastrously wrong. And to be fair as well, you know, I'm not. I'm not saying the best of mates. They, they, de they definitely like don't like each other's character. But the, the narrative and the story created to this is not about them two. It's about what three people sat around the ring did last time, and that's where the stories come from. So really, it's not about not as much about them not disliking each other. It's been it's been sort of amplified by what happened in the first fight. But we love this sport because of the stories of you know going back in history about all the the grudge matches and to have a dance partner like this it's all about timing you've got to have someone at your weight around at the same time as you a boxing at the same level as you your personalities clash to a certain extent and then you're going to box each other and, and and it's felt nice for these two and you know in 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 10 15 years time they might be like me and Matthew Macklin sat there having a having a coffee and having a laugh, but well, I wouldn't. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But you know, hopefully, because at the end of the day, it's only boxing. I mean, Jamie, it's an interesting point that you make. But in terms of a rivalry, everybody needs a dance partner to have one of them. With that in mind, depending on how the fight plays out, and if it was to be Jack to have his hand raised this time around, do you think there's potential there for a trilogy? If it was a bit more of a, a fan-friendly fight, taken into consideration? I think it all depends on what happens in this fight. You know. And I, w I wouldn't even like to look that far in the future um, because we've still got 10 weeks and, and, and this fight's been made three times already and, and that happened. So please not let's tempt fate. Let's everyone get through camp healthily. Um, let's have a fight. Let's put a real good fight on for the fans and then we'll see what happens in the future. One thing I want to get your thoughts on, Jamie. Obviously, we've seen how heated it gets when they're both in the same room together. As we mentioned, they dislike each other. Is there any risk that emotion takes over on fight night and the game plan that you set out, the game plan that Joe McNally sets out somewhat, maybe not all the way out the window, but it's kind of waving out the window. Well, listen, there's always that risk, isn't there? You know, because the vast, vast majority of fights, what fighters take place in, there isn't that emotion in there. Um, and you don't know how you're going to respond until you're under the lights, on the on, on the night, under the pressure. And you see, my my view on my fight, I don't know Josh well enough to, to, have, a, to have a say on it. But I know Jack Carroll generally is cool, calm and collected. And even yesterday, even though it was a bit chaotic, he was still look, seemed cool, calm, collected. So I, I, don't, I don't worry about uh, Jack in those situations. 
Going into this fight, Jamie, and you look at the most recent version of Jack against Jorge Linares, you look at the most recent version of Josh against TV Lopez. How different of a fight do you anticipate it being to their first fight? Um, I think maybe initially the first couple of rounds, both fighters might try something different because, you know, it's a different fight. And, and, and as Jack said just today, this is the 13th round. Once they've had that feeling out process, generally a rematch starts off a bit quicker. Um, I don't buy into this narrative about Josh Taylor not being the fighter he was because he just lost to Tifimo Lopez, who's a phenomenal fighter. And in my eyes, Jack Carroll's a phenomenal fighter. So just because people believe that Jack beat him and, and, and you know he has a loss to Tifimo, doesn't mean that he's finished. So and, and with, not by any stretch of the imagination can we ever think that because we have to go into a camp taking for the best version of Josh Taylor he is and then we're going in and do the, do the best job that we can do. Away from this, we saw Cameron Bong have his fight with Jordan Flynn announced earlier. Um, he was a little bit more coy on it when I spoke to you at the Bilotti Dillon press conference. Now it's been officially announced. So talk to me about it, what this challenge brings for Cameron Bong. Well, it's, it's a good fight uh, for a young kid coming through who's, in my opinion, above your average prospect coming through in terms of talent. And what's the point in matching him with 10 or 15 um, journeymen where he's not going to learn any lessons at all? And then by the time he gets into decent fights, he then starts learning lessons. He may as well box kids like Jordan Flynn who are going to come and push him hard, put him into positions where he's never going to be in for 10, 15 fights if he boxes journeymen and get lessons from it. So he takes the lessons on board early so he's not learning them in title fights. So, I mean, the very, very worst case scenario is he, is he loses a fight in his fifth fight. Not the end of the world for someone like Cameron as long as he learns from it. But it's not going to happen because I know he's, he's good enough and, and capable enough of beating Jordan Flynn. And that's not a slight on Jordan Flynn. That's just me saying I, I respect both guys for having the balls at this stage of the career to put it on the line and go, fuck it, why not? Do you know what I mean? It doesn't happen enough. Too, too many young prospects coming through are scared of losing their own. Just something else involving your Jim Jamie Swafty earlier that he's come out that yourself and Chantel have parted ways. Just what can you fill me in on on that? Yeah, listen, we have, we have parted ways, but I'd, today's about Jack Carroll and, you know, obviously Cameron before, and I'd rather not speak about it now. That's fair enough, Jamie. And then, yeah, just final one. I didn't get a chance to speak to you about it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark, what's your take on that fight? Good fight. Good fight. And, you know, um, I just think that Fabio Wardley's getting better and better. And, you know, Fraser Clark's a good fighter, a solid fighter. Um, I just got, get, get the feeling that he's at that stage now in his career. I don't think he's going to get any better. Um, he's probably at his, at his ceiling. And I think there's more room for improvement um, from Fabio Wardley. So, um, so it's a great fight. And, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not an easy one to pick. You really don't know how Fraser Clark's going to perform when he gets in there. Fabio Wardley, who's boxed at a decent level, you know, the last, last couple of fights, and he can really whack. So, uh, and Fraser will come and put it on him and try and bully him back and I think he's got the makings of a great fight to be honest on paper Alright Jamie listen I know there's other people waiting to speak to you so the queues are forming thanks for speaking to me and good luck with the rest of the camp with Jack and good luck yeah. come April 27th Thank you